Women's Criterium Championship 2021. So this is a recap from the old race. We've got current sites power data here, which is very exciting. Um, so we're just going to go through the lap. Obviously, if you've seen the men's one, it's the same circuit. But if you haven't, then definitely check out that video. I um, should have it on the screen now. But anyway, it's a pretty technical circuit all around. Um, you know, quite a lot of corners, quite a lot of barriers. It's relatively narrow uh, for some parts. But yeah, it's a pretty good course in my opinion. I think it makes it pretty hard uh, to move up at any point. So it basically means positioning from the off is actually really important. You can see here this rider for Team London is absolutely whacking it on the front. And making sure everyone's absolutely strung out. Here's really the only place you can move up. You can see Joe Tinley on the left moving up here. Um, and then you've got a couple of Team Breeze riders who they're like basically GB national team. Um, you've got the um, IT um, races here as well, like Hansel Canyon, Canyon, SRAM, and then I think there's also Abby May for Tipco uh, Silicon. Is it Tipco Silicon Valley Bank or something? Um, anyway, she's racing as well. Um, and then there's also Cam Stafosi who are a UCI team as well. Um, and you can see here Joe Tinley moving up straight away. There's already gaps coming around. You can see a bit of like shine on the um, on the road, which could be some water or oil. Uh, but anyway, nonetheless, it's pretty, it's decently technical. And you can see here already gaps are opening up quite a lot already. And it really, in my opinion, makes it one of those races where you've got to race from the front. You've got to just make sure you always are just moving up and got to expend as much energy as possible. Not, not as much as energy as possible, but you don't need to be like worrying about um, expending energy as long as you're in the front. Because I think everyone's going to be doing similar amounts of work on the wheel or off the wheel. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference, to be honest. Um, but anyway, we can see here, again, moving around. The numbers are like pretty decent to be fair, but you can see there's not as much surging out the corners as maybe you expect. But Joe Tinley now goes on the attack here, absolutely flying into this corner. And she's a local rider, she knows the roads. And I think in reality, probably was like, I wanna start, you know, a break early on. Um, and she attacks into this corner and you can see no one's really closing. This rider from Team London, she'd just done like the whole lap on the on her own on the front, um, the previous lap, so it was sort of acceptable that she probably wouldn't be able to close it. Team Breeze person, she tries to get across now as well, um, but just can't seem to close it. And I think this is their thing is like, if you can't close this gap straight away, as soon as one or two riders split their elbows, then it's a huge effort to get across. And you can see here at this point, you think, to be honest, like, I don't think Joe Tinley's gonna make it. Like, realistically, you know, you've still got a good part of an hour left to go in the race. Um, she's doing like a fair amount of watts, so it's gonna be definitely tough to get across. I think her weight, she said on Strava, was like 64 kilos, just for reference. Um, I think she did like 260, 270 normalized for about an hour, which is like 4.3, 4.4 watts per kilo. Um, but here, like, she looks back and she's got a big gap, and you're just like, well, what do you do? Do you just commit? And I guess the thing is, at this point, you're like, well, you might as well just commit and see what happens. Because if they get, like, across to you, then obviously they're going to be strong and going to help you. And also, it's going to be a big turn. It's not like someone's just going to, like, get on the front and drill it and then everyone's gonna be sitting in getting across. Like, someone will have to attack across and then they'll be swapping turns. Like, it'll be a big effort to get across. In which case, it's probably not that much more work being able to be on the front because obviously every time you're on the front, you take the perfect line around the corner. You don't have to spike your watts out the corner. So you can actually keep your heart rate relatively smooth compared to people who will be like fifth, sixth wheel. Yeah, they're getting a draft on the straight sections, but every corner they're gonna be doing way more watts than you. And actually, it's probably not that more tiring. Like, you can see out the corner she's doing maybe 400 watts, which is like decent, but it's not like a six, 700 watt um, like sprint out the corner, which definitely would tax the legs quite a lot more. And the speeds again is, is pretty decent here as well, like 40k an hour-ish. I think she averaged like 36, 37k an hour for the race, which considering it's like a pretty hilly um, slash technical circuit. Um, so yeah, like again, team story on the front now trying to chase it back. But like if it's just one rider, like Joe Tinley is probably one of the strongest riders on the circuit. So it's like in order to get it back, you've got to make sure, you've got to basically send your like A grade hitter to get her back. Like you can't just send anyone who's just think, oh yeah, I think it's Lucy Gowan on the front. Like, yeah, she's strong, but like probably not gonna be able to bring this back on her own unless you get some help. And like the gap now, you think in order to close a five, 10 second gap, you've got to go quicker than her. And Joe Tinley, and like, you obviously haven't been able to do it in the last couple laps. So I don't think you're gonna be able to do it. And also like now the gap is so big, trying to catch lap riders, you really just like, I just don't see how it's gonna happen. And anyway, and then this is the the telltale sign. She's got teammates blocking behind as well. And that literally is it. Like at this point you can see that like it's still pretty strung out, but you can see people are getting back on. And I think basically nothing happened. Like that was it. The race was gone at that point. They sort of sat up a little bit. She just kept on going. And we're now into, the, you can see it's dark. We're into the final couple laps and she's got two laps to go as you saw on the board. 
and there's just no one catching up because it was like got to the point where it was like Lucy Gala chased a lot and then it was just like I know people kept on trying to chase in vain you can see here like obviously there's no point chasing now because you know um that the final of it is is complete like you know you're not going to bring it back so it's more about just fighting for position than anything else but it's an absolutely solid ride basically going from the gun I mean I think it was like two minutes in three minutes in Joe Tinley just launched it and like maybe it played into the back like Hannah Barnes isn't going to want to chase this back she probably wants an easy race she's racing on the weekend more worried about the road race I'm not sure but it did seem odd that no one wanted to attack across because you think if Hannah Barnes had a full gas attack surely she wouldn't bring many people with her and get across or maybe they just simply underestimated her and were just like nah she can't be that strong like surely she'll just crack um but I think it's one of those things where if you don't have to be cracked like she's pretty aero like not crazy aero but decent like was in the drops the whole way so fair took the corners well like she could definitely corner well which I think you know if you can put a little bit of time into the person on the front who's maybe not as good at cornering you even if it's half a second four corners like that's two seconds every lap and like that's two seconds less that you have to ride um, to make the difference so you, again it's like it's all these small things that she definitely was taking those corners faster than those women there um when like in the earlier laps and you can see here she's actually still motoring along has a nice high cadence as well and I'm like now getting trying to get a little bit more arrow i mean obviously it's like a minute gap is just bonkers i mean she's like it's just crazy um she's almost like caught them basically <laughs> it's absolutely bonkers how big the gap is and i think it's also interesting like tactically because you think it's one of those things in cycling that never makes sense like when you race and it's like someone up the road no one wants to chase you attack and everyone will chase you but they won't chase her back who's up the road and it doesn't make any sense but i think it's just the fact that you don't want to help any of the rest of your teammates you just want to or like anyone else who isn't your teammate you're just like oh well i don't want to miss the move now because the move's already gone but yeah it's pretty pretty crazy ride by her to be honest um super super strong and um quite a way to do it as well not just waiting for the sprint or anything um and i guess it removes all luck all sort of like luck or fortune or whatever i mean it's just like you go from that far out it's like fair play you just you, you <laughs> zona gonna win it or you're not um you can see her teammate um it's like red chi red chili bikes nocturne something something i can't remember exactly their name um but anyway yeah they they're like a quite a strong team to be fair they've got two or three in the in that group um which i guess is good for the blocking like you know you just sit second third wheel when someone p flicks their elbow through you're just like yeah not pulling a turn and it just like i guess takes the um the fight out the chase she's lapping more rides i think she must lap like most of the field apart from the bunch to be honest it was an absolutely crazy ride um and then going into the last couple of corners looking super super strong as well um like round the corners definitely um definitely decent i think the power data may be slightly out sorry it's really hard to do it because obviously there's a million laps so when trying to get it on the perfect lap and then move it forward is some um, surprisingly difficult actually um <laughs> but yeah it's just good enough and i think it's quite nice to have the power data just because you can see like what she's doing and what people have to do behind to like catch her um because obviously it's sort of easy to be like oh well you know you just do 600 watts but it's like well she's doing a lot of watts anyway it's gonna be hard to get across but anyway it takes this corner nicely and easily hands up celebrates and there we go anyway we're, we're then gonna zoom i guess to the sprint for second and third because wow oh wow that was pretty pretty cracker sprint actually i'm not gonna lie i don't really know how this happened you can see here, DO2 box is going mental under our handlebars. But anyway, big win, very happy. I mean, it's an outrageous way to win it, it really is. Just going solo, almost from the gun, and just have it, having the, um, the guts to do it, I guess, and just being like, yeah, fair enough, just gonna commit and hope it happens, um, is absolutely bonkers. Anyway, we're going towards the final sprint. We'll do some commentary here, because it's, yeah, it's crack as this sprint. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. I mean, you already saw from the men's, I guess, if you watch that, it's very like snaky and I guess you saw in the women's as well like the, the, I don't think the finish is in a great place um so going around this corner you can see Abby May um is on the front absolutely launching it uh just trying to hold everyone off I think you've got to start this sprint early and she does and Corin sides like come behind her trying to come around um and like at this point you're like okay fair enough like she's probably just going to win the sprint no worries um because she does actually have a big big gap but I don't really understand what happened here I think she misunderstood or I guess it wasn't going that this fast around any of the other corners Anyway, takes the the right, then takes the left, and just clips the barriers and goes absolutely flying. Takes out Corin side and takes out some other people as well. Um, but yeah, it was a pretty pretty cracker sprint finish to be honest. I'm not really sure how she managed to crash into the barriers. I mean, I think the feet. The, I guess there are feet. If you look over there, there are feet coming out of the barriers, which is not ideal. But anyway, a huge win for uh, for Joe Tinley. Uh, massive effort just to whack it solo for basically the whole race. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy. And we'll see you in the next one.